Hey there, this is chapter four, accrual accounting and the adjustment process, learning objective number three, preparing adjusting journal entries for accruals. So in short, uh, accruals are what happens when no cash has happened, but there has been an economic event. So we need to make an accrual. In other accounting courses, I refer to accruals as guesses. Uh, you know, we need to accrue for the economic reality. Well, if we had the actual, we would just book it, but we don't have the actual. We have likely our best guess, so we will book that accrual because something reflecting the economic reality is better than nothing. We need to reflect something to tell our users, hey, cool, we got this revenue, or hey, cool, uh -huh, sorry, we owe these expenses. So accruals, um, we have to capture them. Otherwise, they're not on our financial statements. And if they're not in our financial statements, then we are misleading our users. Uh, accrual, you know, this is really the foundation of uh, accrual based accounting. Accrued expenses are expenses that we've incurred but have not yet paid. So like the person working on our deck, they are doing the work. And um, when they're done, you know, then we need to accrue that expense until they bill us. And then when we pay them, so this accrual is an adjustment to both the expense account, so accrued, um, or we just honestly we just say expense, and then we would book the accrued liability to the liability account. Uh, similarly, we have revenues that have been earned but the cash not yet received, uh, and typically um, it would be a debit to either accrued, um, you know, it would just be. Um, it really would just be accounts receivable. Um, however, uh, maybe there's an intermediary, intermediary step where you could call it, um, you know, accrued accounts or, you know, expected accounts, but we're gonna just call it AR and, um, or accrued revenues and debit um, our revenues. Alrighty, so with that, let us um, look at, an MCQ. Which of the following is not an example of an accrued expense? Is it depreciation, salaries, interest, or income tax? Well, if you said depreciation, uh, that is correct. And again, I know we're going to dig into each one of these types of accounts in subsequent chapters, but really we do need to do a brief overview or relatively brief overview and then, you know, keep coming back to these accounts and keep getting more and more familiar. So depreciation is what we're going to be booking um, it after we've already purchased an asset. So the asset is purchased and then the depreciation is the recognition of use over time. It's not an accrued expense because it already happened. The asset is in our books. Salaries though, it tends, so this is being accrual when the timing doesn't equal the expense. People are doing the work. They are coming in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then the following week is when we're gonna pay them for that work. So we have to accrue that salary expense. Similarly, for our mortgage, uh, the passage of time for that loan that's outstanding every day is really like debit interest expense, credit um, interest accrual. But we make the adjustment at the end of the period. Uh, income tax. Income tax is based on when the revenue is earned. We have to also accrue for that income tax for really effectively that net income for tax purposes at the end of the year. So we do need to accrual for tax expense because the cash and the expense are going to have a mismatch in timing. All right. So with that, let us look at a longer example. Um, you'll notice here in this video, I didn't have a separate video for this example because really, if we look at what we're doing with accruals, it's really just the opposite of prepaids. Accruals are no cash, economic event. And prepaids are cash impact, but no economic event yet. So kind of like same, same, but reversed. And if that makes no sense, that is okay. And that is why I'm here. We will guide, we will work through some practical, tactical examples now. So just like last time, for each one of these situations, please um, prepare the adjusting entry that is required on December 31st. 
And then for each um, subsequent situation, prepare the journal entry to record that subsequent cash transaction. So here we're gonna have the economic event, and then we're gonna have the cash, which is the opposite from the last video. All right, give this a try, and I will see you back in just a moment. All right, let's see how you did. For transaction number one, December utility bill for 425 was unrecorded on December 31st. Okay, so they used the utilities, but they hadn't yet um, made an accrual for December 31st. And so we need to do that. They need to debit utilities expense, utilities expense for how much? That's right, 425. Cool. And credit our accounts payable or our accrued liabilities for 425. All right, so it sounds, I used accounts payable instead of accrued liabilities because it sounds like we received a bill, but we hadn't yet paid for it on December 31st. So if they said you use the utilities but hadn't yet received the bill, then I would have this credit as an, as an accrued liability instead. All right, so I'm gonna, mm, I'm gonna fill, I know I'm gonna fiddle with all the formatting, but we're just gonna leave it. We're gonna roll with it. Okay, and then, um, but they did pay the bill on January 21st. So on Jan 21st, they paid the bill. Cool, cool. I will reverse out this accounts payable above and I will pay them. Cash is going out the door. How much? Well, I'm gonna pay them their entire bill because it said I would. All right. Thank you so much. Let's move on to number two. Greenwalk is open seven days a week and employees are paid $3,500 every Monday for seven days. All right. Woo. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the seven day week is a Monday to Sunday work week. December 31st is a Tuesday. So employees will have worked two days. That is Monday, December 30th to Tuesday, December 31st, that they've not been paid for by year end, but the employees will be paid the following Monday, January 6th. All right, so we have some timing. Well, on December 31st, I need to reflect the fact that they have two days worth of salaries expense. And so two days worth of work, be two divided by seven times by their very awesome weekly rate of $3,500. So I need to reflect the thousand dollars, and then this would be for my um, salaries payable. Salaries payable. So I know how much I'm going to pay them. It's not a guess; it's an actual. I can book it as a payable, and that'd be the thousand dollars. And then when are we paying them? On January sixth, Jan sixth. We're actually going to pay them. So we get to reverse out the amount owing. So I'm going to debit our salaries payable and then what's going to go out the door cash I said I'm going to fiddle with why are you not technology okay make these line up a little bit more make us here all right we kind of get it so if we had just paid it right away we wouldn't need these two items here Right, so this would strike through, cross out, wouldn't exist. This wouldn't exist if um, we just paid it when we incurred it. So if everybody got cash at the end of the day, this would just be 500, 500, 500, 500 every single day. But we don't, we have a timing issue between when we incurred the expense and when we paid it. As such, we need two different entries. All right, number three, Greenock signed a $45,000 5% bank loan on November 1st, 2023, that's due in two years. Interest is payable on the first day of the following month and was last paid on December 1st. All right, so what this is telling us is that we were all accrued and paid up for December 1st, but as at December 31st, we haven't reflected the fact that uh, they used a month worth of interest. So as such, we need to make sure that we record debit to interest expense and this debit would be for our loan balance which is 45,000 times by 5,000 pardon me 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5% 5%
or I'm just going to go 0 0.05. And however, this would also be divided by 12 months, pardon me, divided by 12 months because it's 5% annually or 5% divided by 12 for each month. And December 1st, when it was last um, paid to December 31st is going to be one month. So I can only reflect one month's worth of interest. And so then this is going to be to my interest payable. Interest payable. Cool. So we know the amount. We can book the payable. And then when do we say we're going to pay it? Well, the next day. Um, but why it's so important is because Jan December 31st is our financial statement day. So as of December 31st, we have to show this interest and we need to show this amount payable. And then the cash goes out the door. And when the cash goes out the door, we no longer have the payable of $188 and we no longer have cash. So we need to reduce the cash by $188. All right, how you doing? We got two more, you can do this. All right, uh, number four, I'm gonna just tab down a little bit to give you some space. Maybe I'll do it over here. I know, jam. I'll give you full marks, don't worry. This is not a spelling exam. Um, okay. Greenock receives a fee from Pizza Shop next door for all pizzas sold to customers using Greenock's facilities. The amount owing for December is $300, which Pizza Shop will pay on January 4th. All right, so on our, where are we? on our fee from pizza shop, we've earned some stuff. So we expect, and we know how much we're gonna earn, so we expect to have an accounts receivable for $300, pardon me, I need to put the date here. I got so excited, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And the amount of for December, December 31st, is gonna be that $300. And that was for our revenues um, that we earned, so we can say, oh, it says, please use the fees earned account, sure. Fees earned uh, for $300. And then cool, January 4th comes along, Jan 4th comes along. They are going to, they are going to pay us for that amount. They're gonna give us some cash for the $300 and they no longer, uh, we no longer expect money from them, so we can reverse out that accounts receivable. So no longer have it. If they had just paid us um, in December, this would have been our entry. Debit cash, 300. Credit fees earned, 300. But they didn't, so we get to have a little extra fun uh, to reflect the economic reality of our December 31st financial statements. All right, last one, let's bring it on home. You are doing fabulous, one, one, last one. Okay, Greenock rented some of its unused warehouse space to a client for $6,000 a month, payable on the first day of the month. It received the rent for the month of December on January 2nd, uh -huh. okay. Well, they were due, so on December 31st, the economic reality was that they owed us money. So we, and we know exactly how much, so we expect to have an accounts receivable of $6,000. And that was for our rental income, rent income, rent revenue, whatever you want, $6,000. And then on January 2nd, rolls along, um, we get cash in the form of $6,000 and we get to reverse out that accounts receivable for the $6,000 here. All right, how'd you do? Well, we're almost done uh, this video, except we're not. So I'm gonna come back um, outside of Excel and wrap up this video. So stick with me and hint, hint, I think you'll wanna stick with me. All right, so we just finished this example. The summary of basic relationships is kind of a summary of learning objectives two and three. So here we see our prepaid expenses, what happens during the period, and then what happens uh, before the adjustment and what happens after the adjustment. So we have two separate ones for prepaid expenses and uh, deferred revenues. And then what happens when the economic reality happens but cash hasn't yet been exchanged? Well, that's our accruals. 
So what happens at the beginning? Well, nothing, but then what do we have to do? We have to make the adjustment um, to book the reflection of the economic reality. So here's why I said you might want to stick around. And that's because it's your turn. It's your turn to write a question or have an example. So when you decide to do this, you can do it for either a prepaid expense, a deferred revenue, uh, an accrual, uh, accrued expense, or an accrued revenue. And here's kind of the rules of the game. Uh, I'm going to be, I wrote these down. I really want to get these right. So when you do your entry, and again, this is voluntary, um, but again, stick around until the end of the video. Please put this as a separate entry on the chapter four discussion board form. Please put the number of the adjustment you're making. So just one story, one adjustment per discussion board post. Um, consider not making it super obvious that this is an activity you're completing uh, from the lecture videos. And that's because this is a contest. Your submission will be reviewed using the following criteria. Your content. Is your content accurate or accurate-ish? Um, creativity. What kind of journal entry are you doing? I told you all about uh, Shania and Billie Eilish. Well, maybe there's some fancy new people or new um, products that you want to tell us about. Communication. Are you communicating clear and effectively? Uh, is this an example that we might want to use in an upcoming uh, exam or in an upcoming video? So whatever your post is, whatever your response is, please post to Brightspace Discussion Board, Week 4, Chapter 4 in whatever format you like. So it can be a post, um, it can be something else, be creative. No longer than this Friday, September 29th at the end of the day. So it's the same deadline as the adaptive practice. Um, I'm not gonna be putting this as a reminder in the news post because it is a contest. It is like, be like, hey, thank you so much for watching these videos on schedule and for participating. We really, really love it. The top three submissions, um, we'll be evaluating these and we will be declaring the winner and the top three will be getting a $20 e-gift certificate of their choosing. So really, really look forward uh, to seeing who, who submits and don't worry, my heart won't be broken uh, if nobody tries, but uh, just think about it this way. When we did it in class, um, a lot of creativity went into place and you guys beat, uh, beat me in all of these creative examples. So I really look forward to seeing what you are doing here. I'll also give you a little bit of a peek behind the curtain. It's not just participation. It's not quote, just engagement. That on its own would be flipping fabulous for me. Learning is also, you know, learn, do, teach. So learning, exploring, whenever you can apply something to your own life, that is a learning, that is what helps us work smarter, not necessarily harder, and will really help reduce or at least increase the efficiency and effectiveness of your study time going forward. So win, 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 plus potential for a free coffee or whatever you choose. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you in the last video coming up.